we've come all the way to Hyderabad and Bhavneet and Suam thought I let them have all the fun. Mm, nah, 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 nah. You see what I'm about to do today is going to make them very, very jealous. And I think I deserve it because I'm an Abarth owner and this is basically my wet dream. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Driver's Hub. You're watching Auto Culture and with me, I've got an Abarth 595 Competizioni. And since this is the Driver's Hub, best believe this is modded. Now this design is as Italian as it can get. You see right under the Scorpion logo you got a small horizontal air vent which looks like a slim Italian moustache to me. The owner has also upgraded the headlights to LED lamps now and the front bumper looks very aggressive with the lip in the front. Now coming over to the side you'll see that the owner has been inspired by the GTAM Quadrifoglio colours and has also put the 4 leaf clover over there. And apart from all of that I'm pretty sure that the OZ Formula HLD rims are also visible. You'll also notice that the rims have the Alpha logo on them. And in my honest opinion, I feel that this green looks great on the 595. You can beep it out, I don't care. This 595 is the Competizione, which is an even more extreme version of the 595. But this thing is just so cute yet aggressive looking at the same time. The bumpers are super low and the rear gets an aggressive diffuser and a rear spoiler. There are vents and cuts all over the car. Functionality is questionable but it at least makes the 595 look the part and when you are driving this thing down the street, it will for sure garner more attention than any Mini Cooper because of its loud and obnoxious exhaust note and because of its Italian flair. The moment you get into the 595, there is one thing for certain. You've got so much more space than you'd expect it to have. The interior has a lot of good bits in here when compared to my own Abad Punto but let's start off with the seats because these seats are absolute money. You sit in ridiculously good sport bucket seats and you've got support everywhere. I've got good thigh support, I've got support over here for my buttocks actually and I've got good support from the sides over here. My back is all nice and comfortable and I know for a fact that when I'm cornering hard, I'm going to be still in this place and I will not be moving around. Now this thing actually comes with a 5-speed automatic gearbox when compared to the 5-speed manual that you get in the Punto and instead of having a traditional knob, what they've done is over here on the dashboard you've got 4 buttons which you can press in order to select the modes. They've got reverse, neutral, automatic, manual etc. Uh, usually on normal cars and even in the Punto you would see that the button for the windows are on the side panel over here but since this is a tiny and compact car, what they've done is they've put these buttons for the window operations on the dashboard as well. The steering wheel isn't the traditional Punto Abad steering wheel, instead it has a different design, complete with barrel shifters, a prominent grip for your 9 and 3 position and a flat bottom. But what is super interesting to look at is definitely the instrument cluster. First of all, it is one big circle. The outer radius of the circle on the left has your tachometer and on the right has a couple of different options to choose from while the center has your usual trip data, fuel economy and speedometer. Oh and one more thing, this thing has a boost gauge too which is super fun to look at while driving this thing. But before we actually talk about what's under the hood, you guys really, really need to listen to how this car sounds. Now this is where my expertise comes into play. You see, the 595 gets the same 1.4 litre T-Jet that comes in the Abad Punto. The only difference is that from factory it comes with a bigger Garrett Turbo. So stock it makes around 160 bhp. But since this is a stage 2 car, it gets all the goodies like upgraded NGK spark plugs, you've got this massive carbon fibre air induction kit, you've got a turbo blanket, you've got an upgraded intercooler from Garrett itself, you've got a forged blow-off valve. And pair that with an e tuner's tune, you're producing around 230 bhp from a car that weighs somewhere around the same weight as the Polo. Okay, wait, wait. So we've done a bit of a mix-up. The engine in this 595 is basically the same motor you find in the Abad Punto with the same IHI Turbo 2. Yes, it does make somewhere around 160 bhp stock, but that's solely down to the tune. And yes, I know I said 230 bhp, which is also not accurate. 
the thing is if this actually had a garrett turbocharger then this would make around 230 bhp with the tune from e tuners and along with the mods that it already has right now but as of now this car is producing somewhere around 185 to 200 bhp at best it might be a little smaller but to be very honest the amount of power that this has driving this car on the road is going to be insane hold up have you checked out our website TheDriversUp.com is live now with a new segment called TDH Classifieds where you can list your exotic, performance or even project car and target the right audience. Even if you are in the market to buy yourself a nice car of your dreams, something like this, a first of its kind Skoda VRS245 with an all-wheel drive system or maybe something more subtle like this Punto Abarth with a Stage 1 Plus and a lot of goodies. So head on forward to TDH Classifieds and get the car of your dreams. So we're about to take the 595 onto the streets and right now I'm driving in comfort mode actually and in comfort mode the car seems like a very normal automatic small car. I mean <clears throat> it changes the gears on its own, it's very smooth, nothing really harsh about it. It's a normal car really. I mean the steering is light, you can maneuver anywhere and that's the best thing about this car like it is so small and it is so agile that if you want to just turn and you want to change positions on the road you can pretty much do it like now for example yes the road and let's go there and that was quick and that was it was like an arrow it was bang straight and it got so much feel to it and the engine of course the moment the turbo kicks in it's a nice nice run to it's a pretty short sprint to 100 really okay we're going too fast and there are the pops in the banks still driving in like comfort mode now sport mode on okay so we've got the dials changed a little bit traction control is disconnected and let's go for it I should really slow down this car picks up speed really quickly the one other thing that I've noticed, the moment you switch sports mode on, you realize that the steering becomes a bit more heavier and it, there's so much feel to the steering. I mean, I feel everything that I'm doing right now. And actually, I'm going to go back to comfort mode again because of, well, the gearbox. Now, getting onto the gearbox, it's a five-speed automatic gearbox. And to be very honest, it is not the best ones out there. In comfort mode, it is a pretty relaxed gearbox. It knows what it's doing. You're just moving about, you're cruising about. But the moment you put it into sports mode, uh, the thing that happens is that the gear shifts, they become much more clunkier, I feel. I feel clunkier is not the right word, but they become very, very aggressive. And since this is, well, not a DCT in any sort of form or factor, it is not going to be swift. The gear changes won't be very quick and they won't take so long. I mean, it's a split second and you're done in DCTs. But in this, it takes a little time and then it changes the gear and a lot of people who drive a lot of good fancy cars would not like it but honestly i like it because i feel it adds a lot of character to the car and i mean it just makes you feel like you're driving a manual because just like the manual you move ahead you move behind and i feel it's got a lot of character that way but still, I would still prefer that this car came with a manual. I feel with a manual gearbox, this car would have been an amazing experience. And now coming back in terms of the cabin itself, I mean, sound insulation is great. The only thing that you hear inside the cabin are the pops and the bangs and the crazy turbo flutter. I mean, it sounds beautiful. And 
all in all it's a very old school cabin like you've got a lot of dials over here you've got dials for the temperature of the ac you can have it either cold or made or hot yeah all in all i mean the interior is pretty simple i like it a lot of people probably won't in terms of handling i mean small car the suspension from fiat as it is is very good but what the owner has done he's gone ahead and he's put bilstein b14 so it is rock solid the turbo whistle and the turbo flutter and the pops and the bangs and this experience just becomes 10 times better i mean it's really fun to drive i love the size of the car now i'm going to be honest this is more of a toy rather than a proper mode of transportation at least in india especially this particular 595 with its bilstein b14 suspension anti social exhaust and not so smooth gearbox is more of a machine you will take out on sundays to have fun in This is definitely not a car for someone who wants to have a easy going driving experience. It is intense, very noisy, but it will guarantee a big white smile on your face and that's all that matters. My final word it on the car. I mean, I already love it. I love how simple it is. I love how mechanical it is. I mean, majority of the cars you see today are all electronic and they've got all these gizmos and everything and I don't find fun in that. I like it when a car is mechanical. I might have a few complaints here and there. I mean the gearbox is obviously not the best one that there is. I feel that the footwell over here is slightly cramped and might take some getting used to. But I guess those are things you can live with. All in all, I mean the car is great. I would genuinely love to have one one day. And I think yeah, that's about it. Do let us know down in the comments below how you like the 595 or would you actually buy one over something like a polo gt or like another abath for an example so thank you for watching this has been tanay this side and it's time to go